What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to go over the top five ways to get into venomous snakes and also the top five things to think of before you do jump into the hobby. Okay, so this is not going to be in any particular order, but for the first thing that we're starting with is get experience. Now, take, take it out. Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so the first thing you want to do when you're thinking about getting into venomous snakes is you, like I said, you're going to want to get experience. What that means is you're going to want to find someone that keeps venomous snakes and is also not like pick who you, your mentors wisely. You're going to want to pick someone that keeps venomous snakes and knows what they're doing. So you're going to want to observe how they're doing it. Um, and that's for a multitude of reasons. That's one, you're finding someone to teach you how to, um, handle the, the particular snakes you want to work with because they're all different. Like this, Kyle's handling a King Cobra. King COVID, uh, the way you handle a King Cobra is dramatically different than how you'd handle, uh, say, an Inland Taipan, uh, any rattlesnake species, or a bunch of other venomous snake species like Mambas and all that. So each particular snake that you want to work with, you want to find someone that has them so you can get the experience and also pick their brain as well as most states require you if you want to if it's any state that requires a permit requires you to have a certain amount of hours and then uh people to sign off on your permit that are permitted for example here in florida you need a thousand hours of experience with each family group that's uh colubridae vipiridae uh elapidae helidermidae and then hydrophilidae which is the sea snakes which no one has um so you need a thousand hours with each experience uh, each family group plus you need two letters of recommendation from licensed venomous snake uh, permit holders in the state of Florida to sign off on your hours and sign off on your experience saying that yes they did get their hours yes they are experienced I vouch for them when you're getting hours from other people you want to be considerate because the state and the licensing organizations don't require us to actually teach uh, so if you're getting hours from someone, be really respectful and thankful of their time because they are taking time out to teach you a uh, potentially very dangerous hobby and you have to really take it seriously. All right guys, so reason number two is venomous snake bites are very expensive. Now this is an inland taipan, also known as a fierce snake. This is the world's most venomous snake uh, from Australia. And these guys, believe it or not, the anti-venom from them alone, if you were to be proactive and buy it ahead of time, so it wasn't an emergency situation, you're looking at upwards of $2,000 a vial, and the average bite's anywhere from 10 to 20 vials for a treatment. That doesn't even include like other hospital bills, paying the doctors. Now, the reason I feel comfortable handling her with these gloves is she actually has little tiny fangs. Uh, this is a front uh, fixed fang species. So they're pretty small compared to like a viper where they have those hinge fangs that can get quite large like a gaboon viper where they have like two inch long fangs. These guys are very small fang species. Reason number three, this is one that you really have to do some self thinking about is your motivation. So you want to make sure you're motivated to get into venomous snakes for the right reasons. I've seen a lot of people like post online or like, like kind of in talk in the forums or even people I've really talked to in person. If your motivation solely is to get into venomous snakes because you think they're cool, it might not be the hobby for you. Cars are a little bit more fun. I know Kyle keeps a lot of cars because he thinks they're cool. So uh, that's a hobby you might want to get into with this. You really want to be in the hobby because you love it. And because, I mean, honestly, I love these snakes. If we weren't doing YouTube, I'd still have these snakes. If, we, if social media didn't exist, I would still have these snakes. My motivation is I absolutely love them. So if your motivation aligns with that, then you are on the right track. But if your motivation is simply, you think it's cool and you want to get a cool picture with it for social media, this isn't the hobby for you. Uh, so. That's one that you're going to want to do a lot of self thinking about and make sure that you are in it for the right reasons. And as you can see, this is a little monocled cobra. This is a Sufan. Uh, Julie actually named her Naja, uh, which is actually her genus name. Uh, but as you can see, she's very focused on my hand. Cobras are very, very much like they're, they're sight animals. So what they're doing is I've got her attention on my hand. She is completely focused. So when you see people like uh, in Asia work the cobra out of a bucket with a flute, what they're doing is the cobra isn't focused on it because of the music and is dancing. It's focused on that movement of the flute player and that cobra worker. As you can see, she is completely focused here. She doesn't care about um, anything I'm saying because snakes actually don't have ears. Uh, but anyways, that's reason number three. Yeah, so reason number four is you might not have enough space, uh, one for the snake and two to work with the snake. So if you look at this, this is a baby Bushmaster. She's, she's less than a year old and she's about three feet long. Now, 
uh, Bushmasters and this uh, one particular, the Mudas, have the capability of getting up to 12 feet long. And mind you, that's a giant one, but I mean, they'll average eight, eight foot all day. Um, so a snake like that's gonna need a lot of space. But if you think about some of these other venomous snakes, like you got the Mambas uh, that maybe don't get too long, like the East African Greens that get maybe five or six feet, or like the Jamesons that get around that size, but you need a lot of space to work with a snake that's lightning quick. If you're trying to do it in a six by six room or your closet, uh, or even just a regular bedroom with a bed and stuff and furniture around there, you might run into some issues of that snake getting out on you, getting able to hide or just simply shooting across the room if it's too small. So you're not, you're not only talking about caging size, but also just working size. Workable space, which, I mean, if you guys are new to the channel, <laughs> kind of what we're in right now. So this area, uh, Kyle actually had the idea of doing this, of having a huge workable area that we can actually take out like King COVID. Now, mind you, King COVID's two years old. He's about eight feet long. He has the capability of getting 18 feet long, even though he'll probably get smaller than that, around 14 to 15 feet. Uh, so having a big workable area like this to where you can take him out of his big enclosure, bring him out here and, and have a safe space to work with him is crucial. So if you don't have enough space, or if you're doing this like out of your bedroom and you have a snake like King COVID, you got a, a mamba or anything like that, any of these faster snake species, and you've got a bed in your room or a couch, and they take off from you, get underneath some furniture, you don't have enough space to work with them, it gets a really dangerous situation. So obviously with crocodiles, you know, they kind of showed me what, you know, the reason for designing those, what, those latest five ponds and now all these ponds over here. Uh, what have you seen with snakes in that regard? Because obviously you have a ton of experience. Like what have you seen as far as caging requirements? what you recommend from all your experience. So there's two trains of thought here. There's with snakes, and um, unfortunately there is the commercialization of it to where a lot of people keep them in racks and breed them. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I have racks, I'm, I have nothing against it. However, what I've noticed um, since keeping all these snakes down here in this collection, more space, the better. Even if you don't see them using the space, trust me, they are using them. Even like this Bushmaster, I walk in there ev every day She's sitting in one tiny corner. But if I come in there at two o'clock in the morning, which is the time I never go in there, she's <laughs> using her whole four foot cage. She's cruising around, King COVID. We go in there during the day, most of the time he's hiding. But as soon as we leave, or if we come in there at an off hour that we're not normally there, he's out using his eight foot cage mm -hmm. and he's an eight foot snake. Uh, these snakes use the space, even if you don't see it. Like the swamps are always in different places. Um, so one thing that I've, kind of readjusted. I've seen other people do it, like Brian Barczyk uh, had a complete remodel of, of ideology of cage design and making big giant cages. That's one thing that Kyle's kind of pushed on me too, with having these giant crocodile enclosures. I'm seeing a lot of benefit having giant snake enclosures. So that's something going forward for our thinking of here is having giant snake enclosures. And Kyle's influenced that. Also, my buddy Will uh, is influenced bioactive. I really, yeah. I love the idea of having a little ecosystem inside a giant cage where that snake just feels at home. So that's one thing that if you're getting into this, remember it's quality over quantity. Have better setups, better snakes, better, better husbandry for them and have maybe one or two rather than have a hundred and have stuff slip through the cracks. All right guys, so last, last point here, number five is commitment. Make sure that if you want to get into this hobby, you're committed to the hobby. Like I mentioned earlier, it takes a thousand hours in the state of Florida. You have to collect all those hours. It takes about a year, maybe even a year and a half to get all those hours. Um, so you have to commit to the time it takes to do it. Um, I know when I was getting my hours in California, they required 2,500 hours and two years of experience. Where in Florida, it's a thousand and one years of experience. Uh, but what I used to do is the only one, only person close to me was the guy, Steve Angeli. Uh, look him up, he's a great uh, beaded lizard breeder. He breeds a lot of those. He also imports and exports um, a lot of venomous snakes. He lived about two hours from me without any traffic. So once a week, what I would do is I would drive two hours each way. Sometimes it was even up to four hours because of traffic. And I'd spend 12 hours at his house working with snakes and then drive back in traffic uh, just so I can get my hours. And I did that for a little over a year straight every single Friday without fail uh, so that I could get my hours to when I moved down to Florida, I was able to get my permits. Also, uh, you wanna be committed to learning about the snakes that you're caring for and also some of the infections. I know this last year has been a big uh, eye opener for a lot of us with COVID 
and being shut the world being shut down because of the pandemic reptiles also get sick too uh now when these mansions were brought in uh they were kind of divvied up to a few other people some people that ended up with the mansions theirs died and they just died all of a sudden they tested them they came back positive for the paramyxovirus which is if you don't know it's basically a virus that is incurable and is lethal it doesn't always uh, kill your animals right away sometimes it could stay dormant for years pop up and kill all your vipers uh, so if you had like let's say if we had just brought these in to the collection without quarantine and they had paramyxo that could have transferred to all of our vipers our, that means our bushmasters our squams everything it could wipe out an entire collection so you have to stay really did, diligent and be committed to not only keeping yourself safe but keeping the animals safe these guys were actually in quarantine for about four months uh, and they were tested as well so they're negative uh, for paramyxo so that's one of the things you have to stay very very diligent about is committed to the animals another important point is obviously knowing the care of the animals because it's not like you said earlier with a car you buy a car you know you do the oil change put it in the garage yeah. yeah where this you know every single species could be different i mean even with crocodiles you know they they require different diets these guys same thing they're finicky uh they can be finicky about the diet like king covid mm -hmm. with uh with getting him on on mice so the same thing guys you know you got to learn these animals and and know what you're getting yourself into before you get them so the animal doesn't suffer because of it yeah 100 percent. because like you said they are all different we keep uh there's probably 15 species of venomous snakes in that room different species that and pretty much all of them require a different different care requirement mansion vipers uh, compared to squams, even dramatically different. Mangshans compared to bushmasters, whereas you want to uh, spray these guys down and mist them, you do that to bushmasters, they can develop an infection that would kill them if you keep them wet, so you got to mm -hmm. keep them dry but humid. Uh, so the taipan is more dry. Yeah, and even just basic as, you know, temperature and humidity yeah. is so different between these species. You know, crocodiles, I feel like, is, is more... Uh, more generalized but these guys you know every single species is radically different exactly because these guys you want to keep around 80 degrees king covid you want to keep around 90. like they they all have different little requirements that if you don't do your research i mean you just kill your animals all right guys well that wraps up a venomous episode yeah hope you guys really enjoyed today's uh episode if you did make sure to leave a comment let us know what you thought uh, if you want to see more venomous snakes, leave a comment. Let us know some video ideas of what you guys want to see. I know we're able to show a couple of our cool uh, snakes that we have in the snake room today. Uh, but if you want to see more, let us know. Uh, follow us on Patreon where we do a lot of exclusive content. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, like this video, comment, and we'll see you in the next one. See you guys. What happened to not to get in the room? She said it was a, t a dumb idea, so I got rid of it. <laughs>